Welcome to the Brand Theory Podcast, the podcast for helping you uncover your passion, realize your purpose, and take the aligned action. Together, we're going to prove the theory that when we live our lives on brand, the possibilities become limitless. I'm your host, Danielle Marchesi, branding expert and business coach. Let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of the Brand Theory Podcast, where we bring you conversations of high value and inspiration to help you along your entrepreneurial journey and be the best brand and business that you could possibly be. We're going to do that one more time. Welcome back to another episode of the Brand Theory Podcast, where we bring you conversations of high value and high inspiration to help you along your entrepreneurial journey to be the best brand and business you can possibly be and to get you to your desired destination sooner rather than later. Today, we are talking to Francie, a head hype girl for female entrepreneurship, mama and wife, a three times business owner and a world changer. Before we get into all of the amazing things Francie and I talked about, just a quick reminder. Summer may be coming to a close or over, depending on when this episode's coming out, but we have extended our summer sale for the brand audits. Think of this audit like taking your brand to the doctor. We all need to do it. Sometimes we don't want to do it, but it is that conversation you get to have with me to just check in with your brand and your business, your strategies, your procedures, your marketing, all the things that make your brand kind of run on its own and just see are these things working? Are they bringing you the types of clients you want to be working with? Are they bringing you the types of results you want to be seeing? And if not, what can we be adjusting to help you get there sooner rather than later? It is a document. We have a conversation, a good hour-long conversation. I get to know you, the ins and outs of your business, how you started, where you want to be going next, and you tell me exactly how you're running your business. Then for without information, I go and do my own digging. I basically stalk you. I click every link. I sign up for every free way you possibly have. Any point of contact a potential customer or audience member has with your brand and business is what I'm going to be looking at. From there, I give you a report, a beautiful document that says what I think is working and what I think may be may need some adjusting. And you are free to do that adjusting on your own, or we can work further on those adjustments. So it's really just, it's the perfect time to do this as we kind of get into the season change. It's really just that point of contact with somebody who can just help you take a step back, take a, take a breather and adjust what needs to be adjusted again to get you closer to where you want to be going. Sometimes we're just too close to our brand, our business, our strategies to see what need, what, if anything needs to be adjusted. So I'm your girl for that. Call me the brand doctor. Um, That link is in the show notes, as well as that discount code that we are still running. So today we are talking to Francie. This is one of those conversations I have honest, I can honestly say that I have enjoyed every podcast interview that I've ever done, but once in a while, there's an interview that leaves me thinking about it four weeks after and leaves me really like craving even more connection and wishing that this person was closer so we could go grab coffee. And she was just a super authentic and nice human and so knowledgeable and so kind. And I really feel like everything she was talking about kind of spoke some life back into me and spoke some excitement back into me and my brand and my business. Um, so I'll let me do her introduction and then I want to show you something else. Um, you know that that business dream you can't, you just can't shake. Francie guides women as they grow businesses from an idea to proof of concept to a thriving brand they're proud of in her business, Founding Females. She's a three times business owner and a mass with a master's in business, an author, and a speaker who helps deliver practical how to's for accomplishing business goals. She recently published a book called Dream, Build, Grow, a female step by step guide for how to start a business, which details the what, how, and why for building a business. Her, tool, her tools for helping business owners include an all female mastermind and, and an all female startup community live in-person events and conferences, a free resource suite to access business templates. Francie believes in building a business around your life and not a life around your business. Amen to that. Her values include inclusivity, unabated access to financial independence, and peer mentorship. Francie is so sweet that she sent me this book in the mail. She got my address as we were on the interview together. She sent me this book and 
guys, this is like the book I wish I had when I was starting my business. And even now, the thing with this book is it it's jam packed full, but it's not overwhelming. It's very clearly subjected out, if that's even a phrase that makes sense and has checklists. It has multiple explanation. It has places for you to write your objectives and your plans and change it and rearrange it. And it is, it covers everything, finances to business plans. And then in the future, you can go back and say, hey, I need to, something, something's up here. Something isn't going right. Where can I reinforce revenue streams or where can I change things up? Where can I take a look back, see what I, see that foundation I built and see, is that still the foundation? Do I need to be doing some strengthening to that foundation? Protecting your processes. Like these are things that I can be reading now, five years later to just help me continue along my entrepreneurial journey. And just such a cute little handwritten note. You guys know I love a good brand experience extension. So definitely go check out this book. I'll include that link for sure in the show notes, but just wanted to show you this because I didn't have this at the time of the interview. Okay, I'll stop babbling on and let's get to the interview. Welcome to the show, Francie. Thank you, Danielle. It's good to be here. Yeah, I'm super excited to chat and we were just chatting a bit before we hit record and sort of similar in terms of our startup, we were doing something completely different and now we are both running our own businesses. So I'm excited to hear your perspective and your story. And with that said, I know we heard a bit about you in your intro, but please tell us more about yourself and how you got to where you are today. Sure. So I am, I'm an Enneagram three, which means I'm a doer. I'm a, I'm a far reacher. I've got lots of energy, lots of motivation, and I have been in business for seven years. So originally I started as a virtual assistant. I was in the corporate world and found that it was a very ill fit and figured I would just do whatever it took to be able to make my own decisions and avoid the red tape and <laughs> um, get to build something that you know was on my heart. And so I started as a virtual assistant telling business owners, you know, I've got an MBA. I can, I, I can speak the language of business. I can figure things out and I will help you along. And so, oh, by the grace of God, I got clients and my goodness, I felt so blindfolded in the beginning, but now seven years later, I've started two additional businesses, um, still running the original, which has morphed into more data analytics, um, SEO, real nerdy stuff. But oh I've God. also recently launched a company back in 2021 called Founding Females, and we lead women into and through entrepreneurship. And that is the business that has my heart. So that one I get so passionate about. I feel like I'm walking in my purpose and get to help women create this business around their life and not their life around a business. I love that. I think I read somewhere too, that you were all set to start a day spa. Is that correct? Yeah. Tell us about that and tell us about what happened with that. Well, I joke that my husband, then boyfriend bait and switched me. So I was going through my MBA program and really interested in the spa industry. And I thought when he was living in Atlanta at the time, I thought, wow, Atlanta would be such a great market to open up a high-end day spa. I had worked in a five-star franchise called the Woodhouse Day Spa, which is a fantastic. Oh, yeah, there's, I know the one in Atlanta. <laughs> Highly recommend. Um, and I wanted to open up something like that experience, but more, you know, curating the brand and curating the experience. And, and then he ended up taking a job back home where he's originally from in central Illinois. And the market just wasn't a great fit, but it took me a while to figure that out. And so I got a job um, at a, a medical day spa and was not mature enough or ready for the position that I was in. I didn't know anything about managing people. And so I really just, I just um, didn't do well. And that reflected because I'm an Enneagram three, um, achievement is very important to me and I derive meaning about myself. That was a really hard, um, difficult situation to navigate 
because I felt like I had totally failed this trajectory that I was going into. I had to give a three month notice, 90 days. And so I fulfilled every single day of that notice. And then I decided to go out on my own and I had a little bit of savings. And so I bootstrapped the process and figured it out as I went, but man, it was messy. Yeah. So that's one of my questions too, is when you say it's messy, what does that mean? I guess this is kind of what it means, but what else was your experience of bootstrapping the business when you first started? Just spaghetti all over the wall, <laughs> just <laughs> throwing it all at the wall. You know, mind you, I grew up as the daughter of an entrepreneur. And so I knew what it took from an outside perspective, but stepping into the role of starting and running your own business is a completely different world. And so really, I felt like I was walking around with a blindfold around my eyes and I had a ton of time on my hands. So I did research, thank goodness for the pioneers who have come before us developing online businesses and figuring out content to leave trails to figure out, you know, little things along the way, but that's how a lot of people do it. You know, if you are a doer, if you are a uh, figure outer, you can learn and, and figure out anything you want to know, which is what I love about our entrepreneur ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And I love that, you know, it's, it's, it probably felt like, and you were sharing with us, it felt like such a failure when you weren't able to fulfill your duties in that job, but it's crazy how life turns out and points us in that path that we are actually supposed to go. And that fits our, our skill sets and our zone of genius. If you're saying that you're an Enneagram three, it's interesting that when we go into these corporate jobs, we go into these other jobs, we don't necessarily know that. Right. And we don't know that this is how we function. We don't know this is how we work. And years later, when we discover that and we're working in our zone of genius, it's all like, Oh, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. That was never where I was supposed to be. Okay, got it. Here I am. I love that. Exactly. And everybody's path to get to that point looks a little bit different. Um, For me, a lot of it was sitting in meetings. It was, you know, all of the, the corporate rules that you have to abide by. And I didn't realize I was such a, such a person for bucking the rules, but (laughs) apparently I am. And so now, you know, the entrepreneurial life just fits. And I really, really preach and advocate for women to figure out the lifestyle that they want and then build a business that fits around that all the while building an asset, not a paycheck, right? So not just making money for the month so that we can pay our bills, but building inherent value into the business that we're creating so that we are not the one moving all of the chess pieces. We are not the one who, you know, it's all in our minds and nobody else could figure out how to create the same results. And as entrepreneurs, that can be really scary to relinquish that control, but there's so much freedom on the other side of building something that somebody else could step into somebody else could put a dollar amount on and offer to buy. And that can become, you know, our, our retirement, our kids college education. It can, it can become a lot of things. And so I encourage women around me, don't just work for that, you know, that invoice paid, but build something that has value in it. And you have your systems and your processes documented you, you know, somebody could come in and and follow your same processes so that you can step away and eventually become who I call full-scale Fiona, who is, you know, she is looking at her business from the top down and she is in charge of the vision moving forward. So she's the one carving out the path that never existed before. Mm, I love her. She sounds awesome. So let's talk a little bit about, I feel like there's two sets of people who listen to this podcast and there's one who are literally just starting out and they're just kind of getting all the pieces together. And then there's the people who are, have teenage entrepreneurship, right? Like they're kind of like in the middle of their journey, so to speak. They're in the middle, they're getting out of the beginning stages and they're ready for Fiona is on their, on their horizon. So what are some tips you have of things to be putting in place to transition from feeling like you're, you're just working to pay the bills that month and you're working to build an asset and an investment? So that's a good question. So I have three avatars in my business. I have a DIY dolly, 
passionate pearl and full scale Fiona. And those three personas describe exactly what you just, just outlined. So we have DIY Dolly, who's just getting started. I described myself as her previously in doing a ton of research and, you know, taking to the interwebs, trying to figure it all out, downloading every free resource, have this dream on my heart. I know generally what it looks like. Maybe don't have all the details figured out, but mostly I just have this insane drive to create something. And then we have Passionate Pearl. And so Passionate Pearl has proof of concept in her business. She's got one hand working in her business, producing the results, being the service provider. And she has one hand on her business, trying to curate and craft the vision for what it's going to be moving forward. So she's in that CEO role, and she's also in that service producer, service provider role. Um, if it's an e-commerce business, you know, she's the one maybe creating the, the products or packaging up the uh, purchases to be able to send out. So she's very much wearing many hats, many roles, um, and she's in the, in the go-between, but she knows enough to know that this is working. Oh my gosh, this thing is working. And then, you know, she can transition into who we talked about full scale Fiona, who has put pieces in place so that she can step back. She doesn't have to be moving every piece, pulling every lever, and she can really, um, define the vision for her business moving forward, but it's really hard for people to jump from passionate Pearl to full scale Fiona, because we've built something ourselves that, and I think we, we derive a lot of value out of creating the results in our own business. And so to think that it can run and us not have our little secret sauce on every single piece, it'd be really hard to, to kind of give up that control. Yeah. I I feel like I'm in that in between myself right now of I've got some people in place, but I feel like sometimes I don't give enough direction to them. So then it comes back and the work's like, "Uh, I'll just do it myself rather than saying, Hey, let's try this or let's do this or recording a quick loom video to review. I have it in my head. And I know a lot of people have a struggle with this of it's just easier if I just do it myself. And there I am working like all hours of the night, but still paying for the work that, and it was good. It just wasn't, I didn't provide enough for the end result that I needed. So any tips around that? (laughs) Yes. So I sat down at this networking event one time and I was lamenting about exactly this. So I said, I just wish I could find another me. I just wish. And what I meant by that is I wish somebody who cared about results as much as me. Yes. somebody who took the initiative as much as me. I wish that I could find somebody who, um, you know, created the type, the caliber of um, work that I could create. But the truth is that person is going to go out and start her own business, right? Mm -hmm. Why would she work for somebody else? Because if she has the self-initiative, if she has the, the go-getter, the, the, um, ability to create high level results, then she probably also has the internal drive to do it herself. And so I sat down next to these two older um, business owners. They had been at it for a long time. And this woman said to me, she said, Francie, you have to be willing to train them. And to me, that was a huge, like, the, the breath almost came out of my lungs because I was like, well, I shouldn't have to train them. They're, they're contractors and I'm paying them a, you know, a high rate. They're not employees. And the more I thought about it, the more she's, she's so right. We have to be willing to walk alongside those people. And in micro instances, explain to them the difference between maybe what they created and what our our vision is and Mm -hmm. why it plays into the bigger picture. And, you know, Daniel, that goes back to, to managing people. I think that there's a part of my ego that was bruised so badly when I walked away from my corporate career that I'm afraid to even step into that. So maybe there's other entrepreneurs and freelancers out there who feel the same way that maybe there's a little bit of fear there around training and managing people. 
But if we can look at it from a perspective of bettering them, they're not going to be with us forever. They're contractors, Mm -hmm. right? But if we can create an ecosystem where they feel safe to try new things, where they feel safe to ask questions and, you know, suggest ideas, our business is only going to get better. Yeah. That's such a good point. And out of all of this, out of all your seven years experience and the trials and errors, the ups and downs, the slew of clients that you've been able to help, you then went and wrote a book. So tell us about that. You know, I look back on it and it was a little crazy because I have a four-year-old daughter and to, to think about all the ways that my husband cleared my path for me. We use that term a lot for each other, whether it's, you know, one of us wants to keep a consistent workout schedule or whatever. We talk about clearing each other's path. And in my goodness, he cleared my path so well um, to be able to sit down. I mean, whole Saturdays and Sundays pouring into this book, but it was a way for me to pass along all of the knowledge and insight that mentors, bosses, professors, my own dad, who's my entrepreneurial hero, had poured into me. And so I, as I envision founding females, I envision being able to help women into and through entrepreneurship. But if I'm handcuffed to only working with people one-on-one, whether even if it's in a group setting, you know, one-on-one, Um, mastermind startup community setting, there's still so much limitation to being able to unhinge them in their businesses. And so I have this dream of, of, um, you know, starting a seed fund for women. The the average request for funding is about $1,200, which is so easy. You know, I have this dream of taking our in-person event nationwide. And so if I am going to focus on the little things, I have got to produce this guide for women to be able to open the pages, pour into, and realize why they're making the decisions that they are. So I'll back up a little bit and say, this book is a guide. It's a six phase guide to lead women to clarifying their business idea all the way to profiting and scaling in their business. And so it was a way for me to take everything that I learned from Simply Integrated and a lot of things that I did wrong and pour it into, if I had it to do over again, this is what I would do so that women have it at their fingertips and the barriers to being able to unhinge and learn how to start a successful business does not rest on them being in a community with me or in, you know, my own physical community here in central Illinois. And my goodness, I've had so many mentors pour into me. So it's a pleasure to be able to pass that information along. I love that. And I feel like it's the type of book, I haven't read it yet, um, but I feel like it's the type of book that you could pick up over and over and over again throughout those different phases of your business. Or if you need that reminder, or as you're transitioning through those avatars of, oh yeah, what am I doing? Oh yeah, let me just go back to that resource guide and just remind myself why I'm doing this in the beginning and what I need to do for that transition. That's amazing. Well, you just nailed it because I, when I set out to do this project, I had probably 10 how to start a business books on my shelf. But what I noticed is that a lot of them tell you what to do, but they don't tell you how to do it or why. And I think the why is the big piece to empowering women to feel confident in their own decision-making. And if we can help women understand why we're making these business decisions, you know, why we build assets, not paychecks from the beginning, why we are planting seeds along the way, for example, then that becomes inherent in their everyday thinking and understanding about how their business works in the, in the bigger world. And so that is my goal. And I think that's the biggest thing that I took away from my MBA was to speak the language of business and to understand almost like uh, economics that when you do one thing, it impacts another thing. And I think as we're kind of wading through figuring out our own business, um, we can 
recognize trends that, okay, this thing works in my business, you know, a specific um, email subject line, for example, or posting at a certain time on social media. But what I want to avoid is just memorizing the right answer and understanding so that businesses can unhinge faster, um, grow as, as big and as fast as women want them to, or, you know, or maybe not, maybe they want to keep a small business and that's okay because we, again, build a business around our life and not a life. Yeah. Our I love it. I love that. I, I want to, I have your book in my Amazon cart, like adding a couple other things in oh. before I purchase, but I think that's because you're right. We have so many books on our shelves of the, how of the, what to do's, but not necessarily the how to's and the extra step and the book that you can refer to over and over again. Um, I love it. And it's beautiful. The cover is amazing. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Did you self-publish that? I did. So I worked with a company, um, market refined media, and they walked me through the process. Okay. You can probably relate as an entrepreneur. And you said this earlier, I just throw it on my back. I'll figure that out. Throw that on my back. I'll figure that out. Well, with two businesses, I couldn't do that. I knew I didn't have the capacity. So I worked with market refined media and they brought in, you know, the editors, the book designers, the um, people who helped me figure out Amazon. There's a huge learning curve to self-publishing a book. And I don't want to deter anyone from doing it. I think that if, if, again, if you're a figure out or you can figure it out, it's all out there. There's nothing stopping you. The barriers to entry have never been lower. But for me personally, being a mom, a wife, a uh, two-time business owner, um, then I, I just couldn't do that. And so um, they were amazing in helping lead me down the path of, you know, this is what we do first and this is what we do next. In fact, I had an editor, um, the first manuscript was only four phases. So clarify, research, build and launch. And I was out of steam. I handed that thing over and I was like nearly out of breath. And she came back and she said, Francie, I don't think you're done. I think you need to add profit and scale because those are two um, topics, concepts that really will um, kind of pin this con, this, this business idea together. And so I said, okay, <laughs> I will try you again. <laughs> Here we go again. Exactly. And so it's things like that. People who know, you know, what keywords to use. I'm an SEO and still Amazon SEO keyword research is different from, mm. you know, your general Google SEO. So for me, it was the right choice to outsource some of those things, but I would encourage anyone who's listening. If you have a book in your heart, and I think we all do, absolutely go for it. Yeah. I love that. So, okay. You are like extremely tapped into female entrepreneurship and you help, you've made your passion around that. You've wrote a book for us. You have your mastermind around it. So can you tell us in your opinion, what you see happening next with female entrepreneurship? Like what can we expect in the next couple of years? You know, I see this morphing continuing to happen of women who want to fill the roles of being caretaker, being taxi, you know, grocery shopper. We, we love those roles a lot of times as much as we complain about them. Um, but we, we want to fill them and we want a career. And I see this continued movement toward that toward building businesses that produce value and they don't necessarily require or rest on a certain number of hours in the day. Women are figuring out how to create value outside of, you know, being physically present. And I love that. Um, we want to be home for snuggles. We want to, um, build a business on our own terms, basically. And I see that continuing to happen. I also see female entrepreneurs gravitating toward other female entrepreneurs because we speak the same language. For example, we ran a mastermind group um, 
it was kind of a networking group once a month where women would come together at a coffee shop and we would sit down and we would say, what's your current challenge and how can we as a community help push you through it? And there was a woman who shared that she sat down, she was running her business. She had this dream of her child coming along with her and them doing it together. And she sat down at a meeting with a guy one time and, and he almost suggested that she needed to apologize for having her child there. Like, oh, do you need to reschedule? And so, and for women, we get it, right? Like we, we understand like come as you are, don't, you don't need to dress up for me. And so we're changing the rules. We're, we're rewriting the script around expectations. And I love that. So she sat down at this meeting with this guy and almost felt like she had to apologize for having a child, being a mom. And then she came into our meeting and she breastfed her child while we were all sitting there talking right? Like who would have thought that your child needs to eat at this hour? <laughs> so, you know, women, I feel have a lot more understanding and grace and um, encouragement for those roles that we're filling. And so we, we feel comfortable um, around other people who get it. And so I see a lot more female empowerment, um, women collaborating. I'm seeing a lot of like, quote unquote, competing businesses joining forces, you know, two coffee shops in the area coming together for the common good. And I think that those are beautiful qualities that women bring to the table, that as we follow the traditional business script, we're doing away with, you know, the, the formality of um, a lot of things that are not serving us anymore. Yeah. And I think, you know, I started my business five years ago and it was a time of travel the world, work from wherever, this and that. And now entering in a different phase of my life, I crave being home. Like I crave just building a house and starting a family someday soon or, you know, a couple of years. Um, but having those rules, those traditional wife, mom, those rules, but still being able to do my business in some aspect. And before I didn't necessarily think that that was possible. So I would like rush to build my business to get to a certain point so that I could just like take off while they're, you know, zero to six years old, even when they're in school. But now I'm like, now can do both. You just have to figure out how to do it. So I love that you're supporting a community that kind of has their priorities, but wants to show the future. This is how, this is how we can do things. This doesn't necessarily have to be X, Y, Z. It can be ABC can be your own way. So I love that. I love, thank you for creating that community for women. Thank you. Yeah. It's, and I will say too, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a man hater. I'm not a, I don't call myself a feminist. Some of my biggest supporters have been males. Um, but I think a lot of times women follow this path and it's laid out by men before us. And so there's just cultural norms that, are built into that specific path. So what I'm trying to do is, is to carve another path that women can take um, and maybe oscillate back and forth between the two. And that's fine. Um, but, but to know that there's a community out there who gets it and supports what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So my last question is a question I ask all of my guests. Um, and it is, we define the term here on brand as living true to yourself, authentic, all the all the buzzwords that are overused now. Um, so was there a time in your life or your business where you were living not on brand? You were living off brand. You weren't necessarily living in alignment with who you are, who you wanted to be, what you wanted to do. And how did you recognize that? And how did you navigate back to living on brand? So many things come to mind from a literal perspective. When I was running Simply Integrated, that was a, a brand that I kind of made up myself. You know, I chose the colors, I had the logo designed for me, but stepping into founding females was a very symbolic in, in my life for a lot of reasons, because I ended up outsourcing the branding literally to um, somebody who I just think does incredible work. And to hand that over completely, that was symbolic in the sense that, you know, I don't have to throw everything on my back. Um, I can find people who are great at what they do and trust them. And 
also stepping into founding females, I truly feel like that is my life purpose. And so it feels so on brand every step that I take, every time I, you know, come, you know, get to talk with people like you about founding females. Um, I truly feel like I'm, I'm living in my God-given purpose and, and following the steps that, that I was meant to. So, you know, I think that the, the difference there is a process. It's a journey. It's, it's getting to the point and figuring out what doesn't work so that once the right thing comes along, that you feel it in your bones. Amen, sister. I love that. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom and your experience and your journey with us. I know I found it extremely valuable, so I'm sure my audience will too. But tell us more about where we can find you and what you're working on next. Yes. Foundingfemalesco.com is the place where we can connect. I'm also on Instagram, Founding Females Co. And what's next? We're wrapping up our six week boot camp right now, our first kind of beta test for this program. And we will launch it again in October. So that's a fast track for women starting their businesses. And then in 2023, we're going to launch another in person event here in central Illinois. Last, or I guess this year, 2022 was our first year. And we had 160 women show up just ready to pour into one another. And so, oh my goodness, that's amazing. It was such a beautiful experience for women to come together and just love hard on each other and support one another and be open and welcoming. And so we're going to do that again in 2023 and hoping for, you know, maybe 200, we might have to cap it, but Um, the whole goal is to provide women with resources that will help them at any stage of starting their business. And so this week, actually, I've got to start diving into those planning details. So that is what's coming next. That's amazing. We will have to keep a lookout for that. Well, again, thank you so much for sharing everything with us and we will definitely keep in touch. Thank you. Thanks for what you're doing for our entrepreneur community. You're just doing amazing things and I'm happy to be part of it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.